4.9 loose structures of covalent bonds. For this lesson, please take out the periodic table and table S. Let's move on to the lesson. I want you to keep in mind the following notes about Lewis structures. For Lewis electron dot diagrams of covalent compounds, I want you to note that um, two, a pair of dots and a line each count as two electrons. So one line, which is a bond like this, is the same as this pair of electrons like this. All right, just note that one bond equals one pair of electrons. One bond here equals this pair of electrons, one bond here equals that pair of electrons, and one bond here equals that pair of electrons. So you can represent one pair of electrons simply by putting in a line. They're the same thing in terms of how many electrons they count as. All right, so just note that one line equals a pair of electrons. That's why I put it back and forth, because they mean the same thing in terms of the number of electrons. Since you have four lines in CH4, you have four times two electrons, or four pairs of electrons, making four lines, which equals eight electrons around the C, which you can see right here. And one line next to each H means there's two electrons around each H. So you have two next to this H, two next to this H, two next to this H, and two next to this H. And you have eight electrons around the C, or in other words, four lines around the C. Since you have one line next to the H, you know that you have two electrons, so it's interchangeable. One line just means two electrons, all right? That's what you need to know for this lesson, for the majority. On your own, you can just review covalent bonds and the types of covalent bonds that form. But Now let's discuss how to draw Lewis structures of covalent bonds. For this, you have to use five steps. Step one, you have to draw uh, Lewis structures of each atom. Remember, use the north, east, south, west method or the clockwise approach to represent the correct number of valence electrons in the atom. All right, and once you've drawn the Lewis structures of each atom, make sure to put the least electronegative atom in the middle. Um, the only exception is that H's, despite having relatively no, ro uh, sorry, despite having relatively low electronegativities, always go outside no matter what, okay? Um, one helpful tip I did want to mention was that you should only arrange atoms uh, to form bonds in directions where there are single unpaired electrons on the central atom. The only four possible directions or positions for bond formation uh, with single unpaired electrons are uh, north, east, south, or west. Basically, only where the central atom has single unpaired electrons, okay? So let's say we have to draw the Lewis structure for H2S, right? So based on our rules, we draw uh, the H's electron di diagram uh, with the symbol H and H's one valence electron according to um, its electron configuration at H like this and this, one valence electron for each one at north, okay? On the other hand, S's electron dot diagram is drawn with the symbol S and six valence electrons according to its configuration at north, east, south, west, then north, and east to give you six valence electrons. Okay? Since H's uh, always go on the outside, we have to make sure that when we draw this little structure that we have to put S in the middle. All right? So if we put an S in the middle with the six valence electrons, it basically will look like this. Um, and uh, now, where do we put the H's that bond to the central atom S? Well, we have to look for single unpaired electrons on S, right? And realize that we can only put it in the north, east, south, or west direction for the unpaired electrons, okay? And S has pairs of electrons at north and east, so you can't, you know, put these single unpaired electrons there. But single unpaired electrons do exist on the central S atom at uh, west and south, right? Therefore, we can only arrange the atoms of H at the west direction here and near the south direction right here, okay? Which is how I'll arrange them. Step two, what you have to do is you have to put a ring around all unpaired single electrons on atoms. If this helps you remember it more easily, think of Beyonce's All the Single Ladies. The most famous line from that song is, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Right, so basically what you do is you put a ring or circle around all single unpaired electrons that appear in the diagram. So going back to our um, H2S example, we see single unpaired electrons at the central atom S at the south 
and the west directions. And the single on parallax runs in H's are at north here and at north here. So that's why I circled them as I just did right now. Okay, because they're single ladies or single unpaired electrons. That's why you put a ring around them, right? Step three, what you have to do is you have to pair up these single unpaired electrons on one atom with these single unpaired electrons on another atom. And be sure to uh, connect each pair with the line between the two different atoms. In our H2S example, I pair up the single unpaired electrons on one atom, which is the central atom S, with the single unpaired electron on the on other atoms, which are the H here and the H here, okay? So on S, we have uh, single unpaired electrons at south and west, right? And the unpaired electron at south on the S central atom here pairs with the unpaired electron at um, north on this H atom at the bottom, right? And the unpaired electron at S, uh, sorry, on, uh, on the central S atom at west pairs up with the unpaired electron at north on this H atom to the left, right? So that's what you have to do. You have to pair them up like that since you pair up single unpaired electrons on one atom with the single unpaired electrons on another atom. And you draw each pair as a line or connect them with the line between the different atoms, okay? In step four, you have to draw the Lewis structure, uh, sorry, Lewis electron diagram clearly. Basically, you replace all the messy lines and pairs of single unpaired electrons that are now paired up with straight lines or bonds. So in H2S, I replace this pair of electrons to the west side with the straight line or bond, and I replace this pair of electrons on the south with the straight line or bond, and I get this structure down here at the end of step four. So as you see, this clean bond right here represents these two pair, sorry, this, uh, these two electrons that now pair up. And this clean line down here represents these two electrons that now have paired up, okay? So that's how I redrew the structure. Um, in step five, make sure you check that all, all the H's have uh, two valence electrons and that all other atoms have eight valence electrons. So in H2S, each H is connected to S with a single bond. And since a single bond counts as two valence electrons and each of these H's has no other valence electrons around it, each H atom being connected to the S with a single bond has two valence electrons, which means it has a stable valence electron configuration based on the rules, right? The S, on the other hand, has four electrons already around the central atom and two single bonds connected to it. Since each single bond counts as two electrons and I have two single bonds, I have two times two or four valence electrons from these two single bonds alone. And if I add these four valence electrons from these two single bonds alone to the four electrons that are already around the S atom, which is in the middle, we get four plus four or eight valence electrons. Since S has eight valence electrons total from these four valence electrons and these two bonds, it has a stable electron configuration based on the rules. So I fulfilled all of steps one through five for the um, structure of H2S, as I've just shown in this example. Now let's get a sense of how to draw electron dot diagrams of covalent bonds. So let's start with example one, CCL4. In step one, remember again, you have to draw the Lewis structures of um, all of the atoms. So here we have one C atom and four CL atoms. So remember, never ever smell weird or northeast, southwest, also known as clockwise, is the direction you have to go in to draw the Lewis electron dot diagrams. And the number of valence electrons, let's remember, is the last number in the configuration in the element box. All right, if you look at C's configuration, it has four valence electrons because four is the last number, and C has seven as the last number, so it has seven valence electrons. All right, and diagrams are shown for each atom. You have one C atom and four CL atoms, and that's how I drew it. You can use reference tables, check these, and try drawing them on your own, but let's move on. But let's just remember C has northeast, southwest for four, and CL has northeast, southwest, northeast, south for seven valence electrons. All right. Um, now, C has an electronegativity of 2.3 and Cl has an electronegativity of 3.2. So that means that we put C in the middle and the four Cl's around it because C is the least electronegative. So that's why it goes in the middle because it's the least electronegative according to our rules. All right, and in steps two and three, we circle unpaired electrons in each atom and pair them up between two different atoms and draw a line. So C has unpaired electrons at north, east, south, and west. And CL has um, one single unpaired electron at west, 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 and west here. All right, 
So remember to pair up electrons only where there are single electrons. So now let's see how we pair up. We pair up the valence electrons of C at north here with uh, the Cl here at west. All right, and here, pair up this electron at east with the Cl here at west. All right, and pair up the electron at south with the Cl at west here. Um, and finally, pair up this electron at west with the Cl at west here. All right, um, so you've paired up every single electron with something else just to make pairs for each one of them. Remember, you have to pair the single ones up. It's like your single friends, you've got to pair them up with people. All right, um, step four, you need to replace uh, these lines that connect the two dots with straight lines and no unpaired electrons can show up. So you basically just get rid of the single unpaired electrons and replace them with straight lines. So this is replaced with the straight line going up like this and you have six around the CL. All right, this, you gotta replace this mess with a straight line, which is neat, and six electrons around. Here you gotta replace this pair of electrons in this line with this straight line and the six electrons around the CL. And same idea here to replace these pair of electrons and the six and uh, with the straight line, you have to draw six electrons around the CL. All right, um, so we, so, um, yeah, you can't show unpaired electrons, so we pla replace them with lines instead. All right, and step five, check all H's have two valence electrons and that all other atoms have eight. So we've only got C and Cl, so you check those. The C has four lines around it. So in other words, it has um, eight valence electrons. That's because since each line is two valence electrons, we have two times four or eight valence electrons. For Cl, each pair of dots around it is two valence electrons, and each line is two valence electrons. All right, so we have um, three pairs of, uh, or sorry, six dots around it, and we have one line each. So we have six plus two, or eight total valence electrons. So we know that C satisfies the octet rule, and CL satisfies the octet rule, so we know that this is a valid structure. Because in step five, we've proven that both of them have stable octets as they need. Example two, CO2. So step one, you have to draw Lewis structures of C and O. So C is northeast, southwest for four valence electrons, and O is northeast, southwest, northeast for six valence electrons. All right, and note that C has an electronegativity of 2.3, while O has an electronegativity of 3.4. So since C has a lower electronegativity, or is the least electronegative, we put it in the middle, and O's, and two O's are put around it symmetrically. All right, in steps two and three, C has unpaired electrons at north, east, south, and west shown here, so we have to circle those. All right, O has unpaired electrons at west and south, so you circle those on each um, of the C's, uh, of the O's, I'm sorry. Then you have to pair them up between separate atoms C and O and draw a line. So remember to pair up, again, only electrons where there are single electrons. So pair up the electrons of C at um, west and south um, with the single electrons on O on the left side shown here at west and south. Um, since these O's um, since the single electrons on these O's are closer towards the left side of the C, all right? Um, and pair up the, elect the valence electrons at north and east for C with the single electrons on O on the right w at um, west and south, uh, since these electrons right here are closer to the O on the right, all right? Step four, we replace red lines with straight lines, so note that there are two lines between the C and the O each, because you form two lines and two lines here, so they're double bonds each, all right? Um, so um, think of this as two lines bonding to the left like this, and or two lines on the left, and two lines bonding to the right like this, or two lines to the right. All right, and step five, check all atoms have eight, since we've only got C and O. Uh, C has four lines around it, or eight valence electrons, since two valence electrons each are in each line. Um, and O has two pairs of dots and two lines next to each, or four plus four, which is eight valence electrons, all right? So C is eight valence electrons and so does O, so they both satisfy the octet rule as necessary. Example three and two. So step one, draw Lewis structures of each N, northeast, southwest, north, for five valence electrons on each N. All right, and both atoms have the same electronegativity at 3.0, so you have to put the O atoms next to each other because now there is more or less electronegative. All right, so you have to put the N, N atoms next to each other. In step two and step three, each N has unpaired electrons at east, south, and um, west. So circle them, like so, 
and pair them up between each other and draw a line. So based on the position of the single electrons that are circled and shown, you have to pair up the valence electrons at east, south, and west um, with the valence electrons at west, south, and east on the other NM. So east to west, south to south, and west to east like this. All right, so you've got to pair them up as such. All right. Um, after you've paired them up, you have to draw lines connecting these pairs, like so, so, and so. All right, and step where you have to replace these um, nasty red lines with straight lines. So note that there are three lines or bonds between the two atoms, since uh, each N atom can only bond to the other. All right, um, so you have three lines, like so, because you form three bonds or three pairs of electrons, and you leave the two um, electrons on each N. That was originally there. In step five, you have to check all atoms of eight, since there's only n atoms, and each n atom has one pair of electrons around it and three lines next to it, so you have two plus six or eight valence electrons, since one pair equals two electrons and one line equals two electrons. So since you have two lines, you have two times three or six electrons, based on the lines and two electrons on the top that are originally there. All right, so one pair of electrons plus three lines equals two plus six or eight valence electrons. Example for NH3. So step one, draw Lewis structures of the N atom and each H atom. All right, N is northeast, southwest, north for five valence electrons, and H you have one at north for one valence electron. And remember, all H's are always on the outside, so we put N in the middle no matter what, because H's always go on the outside no matter what. All right, so in steps two and three, N has unpaired electrons at east, south, and west as shown, and each H has an unpaired electron at north, north, and north as shown. All right. So you have to circle all of the unpaired electrons at east, south, and west for nitrogen and one at north for hydrogen. All right, then you have to pair them up and draw the lines. So you have to pair up um, valence electrons at west on N or nitrogen with the north on hydrogen on the left. Then you have to pair up the electron, the single electron at south on N with the north on H at the bottom and pair up the electron at east on N with the north on H on the right side. All right, and step four, you have to replace these lines with straight lines just to make it cleaner and make the um, unpaired electrons now disappear. So you replace the red lines with the straight lines, which is shown like this, straight, straight, three straight lines like that. And you leave the two electrons on the top. All right, step five, you have to check that N has eight and H has two. So each N has one pair of electrons, sorry, yeah, the, the N is one pair of electrons and three lines or bonds, which is two plus six or eight valence electrons. Now for H, each H has a line or bond next to it, so you have two valence electrons so. So we know that the N is satisfied by the octet rule and the H satisfies the duet rule as it's supposed to. So we know that this structure is valid. Example 5, CH4. So step one, draw Lewis structures of the C and, C and H atoms. C is northeast, southwest for four valence electrons and H is north for one valence electron each. North, 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 north. Each one has one valence electron each, so you put it at north for each one of them, all right? And remember, all H's are always on the outside, so you have to put C in the middle no matter what because H is always going on the outside no matter what. Steps two and three, C has unpaired electrons at northeast, southwest, and each H has an unpaired electron at north, so you circle them as such. Northeast, southwest, I circled them, and each H has one unpaired electron anyway, so you circle them on the top at north. All right, so then you have to pair up and draw the lines. So you have to pair up the uh, valence electrons at north on C with the north on H up here. Then you have to pair up the electron at east on C with north on H here, south on C with north on H here, and west on C with north on H here. All right, and step four, you have to replace all these nasty red lines with straight lines and make the electrons disappear. So you just have straight lines instead of the dots. The dots can disappear now. And in step five, you have to check that the C is eight and the H has two. So each, so the C in this structure has four lines or four bonds around it, which is two times four or eight valence electrons, and each H has one line or bond next to it, which means they each have two valence electrons. So we know that C satisfies the octet rule because it has eight, and H satisfies the octet rule because it has two next to it, or one line next to it, all right? And C has four lines next to it, so it has eight valence electrons. H has one line next to it, so it has two valence electrons, so they're both satisfying what they need to. C satisfies the octet rule, H satisfies duet rule. Before I move on, I'd like to, I'd like to mention that I made bonds at north, east, south, and west between the C and Cl atoms in this diagram because there were only single unpaired electrons available on the central C atom at north, east, south, and west. 
And since Cl is more electronegative, I put the Cl atoms on the outside wherever I wanted to in the north, east, south, and west directions from the central C atom, since that's where single um, unpaired electrons were available on the central C atom to form bonds anyway, right? Uh, the unpaired electrons on C at north uh, joined with this unpaired electron on Cl at north. This unpaired electron at C um, on east joined with the unpaired electron on Cl to the east over here, right? This unpaired electron on C at south joined with the unpaired electron on Cl in the southern direction. And this unpaired electron on C at west joined with this unpaired electron at Cl, which is to the west of the C. So this is how I form the four single bonds you see. I join these, 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 and these, okay? Before I move on, I'd like to mention that I made double bonds at C and O at west and east in terms of directions in this diagram because there are only single unpaired electrons available on the central C atom at north, east, south, and west. Because O is more electronegative, I put O atoms on the outside wherever I wanted to in the north, east, south, or west directions from the central C atom since that's where single unpaired electrons were available on the C atom to form bonds anyway, right? Because I felt like it, I decided to just arbitrarily place the O atom to the west here and to the east here of the C atom, since those are two of the allowed positions, right? Now, the single unpaired electrons at west and south on the central C atom bonded with these two unpaired electrons and this O to the left here and here, all right? And since these two pairs of electrons form between the central C atom and the O on the left, I drew a double bond to represent that going between the C in the middle and the O on the left. So that's how I got this double bond on the left side here, bet going between this central C and this O on the left, since you had two um, pairs of electrons joining together, right? Um, now, the single unpaired electrons at north and east on the central C atom, on the other hand, bonded with these two unpaired electrons on this O atom to the right side. Since two pairs of electrons form between the central C atom and the O atom to the right here, I drew a double bond in step four to represent that going between the C atom in the middle and the O atom to the right. Since you have two pairs of electrons joining between the C atom and this O atom, that's why I drew two um, bonds going to the right, because the O here was to the right anyway, so you draw two bonds going to the right. This O was to the left, so you drew two bonds going to the left anyway, since you had two pairs of electrons forming between this C and this O to the left, okay? So that's the idea there. Uh, before I move on, I'd like to mention that I made triple bonds between the N in the middle here, sorry, the N in the middle here, and the uh, N to the right in this diagram because there were single unpaired electrons for the central C atom here available at southeast and west. I put the other N atom at east because I had a choice of bonding at south, um, east, or west since those were the unpaired electron positions available, but I felt like choosing these, so that's why I put the other N atom, okay? Now the unpaired electrons at south, um, east, and west on the central N atom bonds with the three unpaired electrons at N here to the right at southeast and west, right? Since three pairs of electrons join between the central N atom and the N atom to the right, I drew a triple bond going to the right towards this N to represent, you know, what I was doing. So this top bond represents the bond on the top, this bond in the middle represents this bond over here in the middle, and this bond on the bottom represented this bond in the bottom. And the reason why it's going to the right is because I chose to place this N atom to the east, so that's where the bond should be going eastward, okay? Before I move on, I'd like to mention that I made single bonds between the N in the middle and the three H's in the um, south, east, and west directions because there were single unpaired electrons for the central N atom available at south, east, and west anyway, right? Since there were three H's, according to the formula, and I could form bonds with the single unpaired electrons at south, east, and west, that's where I chose to make the three single NH bonds. The unpaired electron on N at west here bonded uh, with this unpaired electron on the H on the left at north. The unpaired electron on N at the south here joined with this unpaired electron on the H at the bottom. And the unpaired electron on N 
at east join with this unpaired electron on the H to the right here. So that's how I got my three single bonds here, here, and here. Okay. So again, let's remember like the general rule here is when you're arranging the atoms, you have to place them in positions only where single unpaired electrons are available, which are south, east, north, or west. In this case, I had unpaired electrons available on the central atom at south, east, and west, so that's why I decided to place the H atoms. One at east, one at south, and one at west. Okay? Before I move on, I'd like to mention that I made single bonds between the C, central C atom in the middle and the H's on the outside in the north, south, um, east, and west directions because there were single unpaired electrons for the central C atom available at north, south, east, and west. Okay? Since there were four H's, according to the formula, and I could form bonds with single unpaired electrons at north, south, east, and west on the central C atom, that's where I made the four single CH bonds at north, uh, south, east, and west. Okay? Now, uh, the unpaired electron on on C at west bonded with the unpaired electron on the H to the left. All right, the unpaired electron on C at south bonded with the unpaired electron on H at the bottom. The unpaired electron on C at east bonded with the unpaired electron with um, H to the east right here. And this unpaired electron on C at north joined with this unpaired electron on the H at the top. So that's how I formed those four single bonds like I see in this diagram. Okay, so that's the whole idea there and the logic behind arranging the atoms, as I did. Now let's go over a sixth example um, of a Lewis electron dot diagram, CHBR3. If you look at this formula, you'll see that you have one C since there's no subscript next to the C. You'll see that you have one H since there's no subscript next to the H, and you'll see there are three BRs since there's a subscript of three next to the BRs. So you have to draw and connect the Lewis electron dot diagrams of um, CH and 3BRs to get the Lewis electron dot diagram of the molecule CHBr3. So C, if you look at the last a number in the electron configuration, is four, so you have four valence electrons around the C atom. For the BR atom, you have seven as the last number in the configuration, so you put seven valence electrons as the number of valence electrons since it's the last number of the configuration. The last number of the configuration of H is one, so you know you have one valence electron around the atom of H. So for C, we draw its Lewis electron dot diagram with four valence electrons as follows, north, east, south, and west for four. For the H, we have um, one valence electron, so we draw one valence electron at north here for uh, one valence electron. For each of the BRs, we have seven valence electrons, right, based on the configuration's last number. So how to draw that is we go northeast, southwest, and then northeast and south clockwise to get seven valence electrons around each of the BR atoms in terms of their electron dot diagrams. Okay, now uh, what we have to do next is we have to decide which element goes in the middle. We already know that H's always must go on the outside because that's the rule we came up with already, right? So we have to put the H on the outside somewhere. And now that we know that H goes on the outside, we have to decide which one goes in the middle, C or BR, right? So we have to compare the electronegativity. C's electronegativity based on table S is 2.3, BR's electronegativity is 3.0 based on table S. If we compare the two electronegativities, we see that C has a lower electronegativity of 2.3. Since C has a lower electronegativity of 2.3 compared to BR, we know that C must be put in the middle since it has the lowest electronegativity, and lowest electronegativity atoms always go in the middle. So I put C in the middle with its four valence electrons like this. Around it, I can arrange the H's and the BR's, which are the H's and the higher electronegativity atoms, however I want. How I decided to arrange is I decided to put H at the north, BR at the east, this BR at the south, and this BR at the west, just because I felt like it. So um, that's, how I, that's how I decided to arrange them. Basically, H always goes on the outside, and BR's higher electronegativity, so it also goes on the outside. I arranged them arbitrarily however I wanted as long as they went in the north, east, south, or west directions. I put the H at north and the BRs at east, south, and west, okay? Now let's talk about how they bond. So what we have to do in step two is circle all these single unpaired electrons. The single unpaired electrons at C are at north, east, south, and west, which is why I circled them. The single unpaired electron in each of these BR atoms at east, south, and west is... Um, at the west corners, which is why I circle them in red here, here, and here, 
okay? And finally, the H at north has a single unpaired electron in its northern direction, which is why I circled it up here. All right, so step two is done. We've circled all the single unpaired electrons. Now what we need to do is pair up these single unpaired electrons between the C atoms and the atoms on the outside. So we had to pair up the single unpaired electrons. Let's see how we do that. This single unpaired electron for C at north pairs up with the single unpaired electron for H at north. So that's one bond formed here. All right. This single unpaired electron at east for C pairs up with this single unpaired electron here at BR on the right at west. So that's another bond. This single unpaired electron for C at south pairs up with this single unpaired electron at west for this BR down here. So that's another bond. Finally, <clears throat> this single unpaired electron at west for C pairs up with the single unpaired electron at west for this BR on the left. So that's a fourth and final bond, okay? So what we have to do is clean up this bond between C and H at north and this bond between C and BR at east, south, and west. If we do that, we get these clean lines. This pair, is, this pair of dots is replaced by this line. This pair of dots is replaced by this clean line. This pair of dots is replaced by this clean line, and this pair of dots is replaced by this clean line. All right, so this is our final uh, Lewis electron dot diagram for CHBR3. All right, now what we, what we have to do is make sure that each of the H's have two valence electrons around them, and that each of every other atom involved in the molecule has eight valence electrons around them. C, as you can see, has um, four bonds around them, and since each bond counts as two electrons, and you've got four bonds. You have two electrons per, per bond times four bonds, or eight valence electrons total around the C. So eight valence electrons around the C, which means it's satisfied and complete in terms of its valence shell. So that's satisfied. BR, as you can see, each of these BRs has six dots around it, or six valence electrons, and they have one bond. All right, since one bond represents um, two valence electrons here, and we have six valence electrons already around the BR. We have six plus two, or eight valence electrons around each BR because you have six dots already, or six valence electrons, and you have that one bond which represents two valence electrons. If you add up the six valence electrons plus the number of valence electrons in one bond, which is two, you get eight valence electrons around each BR. So each BR atom is stable and complete in terms of its valence shell. All right, since it has eight valence electrons or an octet around it, so BR is also satisfied. H, this H up here has um, a single bond attached to it between C and H. Since one bond counts for two valence electrons, we see that this one bond means, sorry, that this H gets two valence electrons from this bond between C and H. Since it gets um, two valence electrons from the single bond between C and H, we see that H is satisfied because it's full with its duet of two valence electrons, okay? So now in example seven, we have C2H3F. According to this formula, we have two Cs because of this subscript, three Hs because of this subscript, and we have one F since there's no subscript next to F, right? So what we have to do in step one is draw the Lewis electron dot diagrams of each of the atoms, each C atom, each H atom, and the one F atom, right? So C, if you look at the last number in the configuration, has four valence electrons. H, if you look at the last number in the configuration, has one valence electron. And F, if you look at the last number in the configuration, has seven valence electrons. So for C, to draw the four valence electrons based on its electron configuration, I draw it at north, east, south, and west for four valence electrons for this C, as well as north, east, south, and west for this C in terms of its electron dot diagrams, okay? For the H, I only have one valence electron. So for uh, for each of these three H atoms, I draw one valence electron at north using the, um, you know, clockwise method. So I draw one valence electron at north here, one valence electron at north here, and one valence electron at north here. Next, for F, um, I have seven valence electrons, so I draw the seven valence electrons around the F atom going north, east, south, west, north, east, and south to give me seven valence electrons, okay? Now what I have to do is I have to decide which atom or atoms go in the middle. Let's remember H's always go on the outside, so, you know, put H's on the outside no matter what. Now, the only things we have left that can stay on the inside are C or F. To decide which one goes in the middle, you have to look at which one is less electronegative of the two. C has an electronegativity of 2.3 if you look on table S, and F has an electronegativity of 4.0 if you look on table S. If you compare these two, C has the, um, 
lower electronegativity of 2.3. So therefore, you have to put the Cs in the middle like this, okay? So that's why I put these two Cs in the middle. Now what I had to do is I had to, um, <clears throat> now that I put the Cs in the middle, I had to decide how the Hs and Fs should be arranged to form bonds, right? So these Cs, if you look at them, have single unpaired electrons at north, east, south, and west, right? The uh, H atoms have single unpaired electrons at north, and the Fs have single unpaired electrons um, at west right here, okay? So since these Cs have unpaired electrons at north, east, south, and west, and they're the central atoms, I can decide to put the um, outside atoms, which are H and F, anywhere at north, east, south, and west for each C atom, right? So arbitrarily, just based on how I felt, I decided, whatever, I'll just put the H um, next to the single unpaired electron at west on this C. So that's why I put H to the west. The single unpaired electron at C at south allows me to put an H beneath it. So that's why I put this single unpaired electron with the H at the bottom here, just because there's a single unpaired electron at this central C atom. For this C atom, you have single unpaired electrons at north, east, south, and west. So I just decide, you know, I can put it at north, east, south, and west. Just because I felt like it, I put the outside atom F next to the single unpaired electron at C on the east. That's why I put the F, F atom to the right of this electron right here, since that's a spot where you can make a bond, right? This single unpaired electron at south is for one of the central C atoms, so I can put an H atom beneath it if I feel like it, which is why I put the H atom down here. All right, so basically, let's remember, anywhere where you have single unpaired electrons at north, east, south, or west on the central atom or atoms, that's where you can um, position the atoms that are on the outside to bond with, okay? So that's what I did. I put H here because there's a single unpaired electron here. I put H down here since there's a single unpaired electron here. I put H down here since there's a single unpaired electron here. And I put F here since there's a single unpaired electron here. I could have put the H up here or up here, but I just decided to put them wherever I felt like as long as it, you know, wasn't was in one of the spots where the single unpaired electrons were. Since single unpaired electrons happen to be here, 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 and here, that's where I positioned my 3H atoms and my 1F atom. Okay? So now what we have to do is we have to pair up the single unpaired electrons in step two, uh, sorry, what we have to do now, I apologize, is we have to circle the single unpaired electrons on each atom. See a single unpaired electrons at north, east, south, and west, as I just stated, so that's why I circle um, the unpaired electrons, just like Beyonce's all the single ladies. For H, you have a single unpaired electron at north, uh, so that's why I circled the single unpaired electron at north here, here, and here since I was unpaired, right? And F has a single unpaired electron at west, so that's why I circled this unpaired electron here. Now what I had to do is I had to pair up the single unpaired electrons between the C and H atom, the C and C atoms, and the C and F atoms. So this single unpaired electron at west and this C goes with this single unpaired electron at H on the left here. The single unpaired electron at south here on this C goes pairs with this single unpaired electron at H on the bottom here. This single unpaired electron at south here on this C pairs up with this single unpaired electron here um, on the H at the bottom here. And this single unpaired electron at east here pairs up with this single unpaired electron at F on the right here. Okay? So now I've paired up, uh, I've, I've done four pairs. Now we have two pairs remain, sorry, two single unpaired electrons remaining on each C. This one at north and this one on east on this C atom, and this one at north and this one at west on this C atom. So since we have no atoms left to bond with, the only logical thing is bond this single unpaired electron with the single unpaired with one of the single unpaired electrons on the other C. So I pair up this one on east on this C with this one on west on this C. I pair up this single unpaired electron at this C at north with this single unpaired electron at north on this other C. Okay? So that's how I form um, my six different bonds. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this this one, this one. All right, so since H is here, going to the west, that's how I make this single bond right here. This bond going to the south from the C on the left is how I made this bond. This single bond going from this C to the south is how I made this bond. This single bond, uh, sorry, this um, pair of electrons going from this C to the west, east, sorry, is how I made this bond going to the east. And these two bonds going in between the Cs is how I made this double bond going in between the Cs, okay? So that's how I did it. And basically, I had to just, in step five, basically what I had to do is I had to prove that 
um, all the H atoms have two valence electrons and all the other atoms have eight valence electrons, right? If you check each C atom, you'll see that has four bonds around it. This one has one, two, three, four right here, and this C atom on the right has one, two, three, four right here, right? Since each of them have four bonds, we can check it as follows. We have four bonds, and since each bond counts as, um, or line counts as two electrons, four bonds would equal four times two, or eight valence electrons total per C atom. Therefore, each C atom has a total of eight valence electrons, okay? So therefore, you know that C is satisfied and it has um, a stable octet, so it's stable. The H, each H has a line next to it or a single bond next to it. As you can see, this has a single bond next to it, this has a single bond next to it, and this has a single bond next to it. Since each H has a single bond next to it, you can check it as follows. One bond or line counts as two electrons. So since each H has one bond or line next to it, it by extension has two valence electrons next to it. Right? Since it has two valence electrons next to it, each H is stable because it has a duet or a filled valence electron configuration. Now for um, the F, we have uh, three pairs of electrons here, here, and here, which I've outlined. And I also have one bond next to the F going from F to C, right? So we had to add these up in terms of electrons and find F with 8 to make it stable. We have three pairs of electrons, so we have um, obviously 3 times 2 or 6 electrons, right? So this is 6 electrons since you have three pairs. A pair is 2, so three pairs would be 6, right? And you have one bond, and we know that one bond counts as two electrons, right? So what you have to add on to these three pairs or six valence electrons is two electrons since this one bond right here counts as two electrons. If you add up six plus two, you see that this F has eight valence electrons, which makes it stable since that's the um, octet it needs to be stable. So C and F have eight valence electrons to get stable octets, and H has two valence electrons to get a stable duet. So everything checks out, and this is a valid Lewis structure. So your final answer here would be this structure right here that looks like this. Okay? So there you go. Um, here are the guided practice questions. Uh, here we have to draw loose electron dot diagrams of H2O, F2, CF4, HCl, and NCl3. Um, you can check these answers on your own, but these are the answers. Please try these. Finally, I'd like for you to complete these homework questions on your own for the next lesson and make sure that you um, answer checkpoint questions 1 to 3, which have popped up throughout this video in addition to these two questions. Thank you very much.